Good evening. I'm Chanel Ramos, and here are some of our top stories we have for you tonight. Governor's proposed sports complex turned down by the legislature. Big time boxing comes to the Virgin Islands, and tonight we take a look into the world of cosmetology. These stories and more are coming up next. <laughs> have a breaking story to report for you. News Channel 8's Wes Small is across the newsroom with the details. Thanks a lot, Chanel. Unbelievable. Just on the phone with Melody Rames and by the Grape Tree Hotel, the old uh, Grape Tree Hotel uh, out on the east end of St. Croix. Listen to this. An estimated 63.5 pounds, 63 and a half pounds of raw hashish, hash into this territory. Street value, according to Police Chief Chris Howell, $575,000 over a half million dollars. No one in custody, just washed up to the beach recently. For more, let's go on the phone right now at this late-breaking story with VIPD Police Chief of St. Croix, Christopher Howe. On Saturday uh, morning, I got a phone call from a source of information who advised me of a possible bail of controlled substance on the south shore of St. Croix. And I quickly dispatched members of the Special Operations Bureau and K-9, along with members of HIDA, who did in fact recover a bail of controlled substance, which was later determined to be hashish. Um, it weighed in at about 65 pounds and has a street value of about $575,000. We'll have more on this late-breaking story tomorrow and a complete follow-up for you back across the newsroom to you, Chanel. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. VA senators voted to at least delay the governor's plan to build a sports complex during session yesterday. News Channel 8's Wes Small discusses that vote and other issues affecting our territory with VI Senator Positive Nelson. Here with Senator Positive Nelson, and we are going to get right to it. You know, Senator, I don't think there's anyone in our territory that's against a sports complex. You know, anything that's going to put um, uh, tourism back on the map. I like how the governor kind of put it, heads and beds needs to be here, and flights and hotel rooms, so forth. Let's get right to it. This legislature um, put, delayed the bill. You could tell us exactly what happened officially, but it doesn't look like the sports complex is going to be built anytime soon. But, uh, thank you, Wes, for having me and uh, to the Channel 8 viewers. That bill last night, Bill 29, that's 0307. The bill proposing to establish a partnership with uh, Global Vest VI LLC and the government of the Virgin Islands to construct or reconstruct Pauli Joseph Stadium and build a sports complex in the area. There were several concerns. Uh, they didn't quite have a clear business plan. As you know, any one of us go to a financial institution asking for financing, the institution would like to see a, a clear outline plan as how you plan to make money, how you plan to invest the money, and there were some things missing from the proposal. We, to us, we weren't getting full disclosure. And additionally, we were being asked to authorize the borrowing for this uh, uh, proposal or for this uh, project before we could review a master service agreement. Now, a situation like that occurred with VINGN. The legislature authorized them to create VINGN. And after the fact now, VINGN uh, paying its directors, have profit sharing, and all of these matters which we have no control over. So we found that these, these, this language should be in place first. We should have be able to review this language prior to granting such authorization. April 20th is a uh, significant day, beside it being Adolf Hitler's birthday, by the way. It's kind of, kind of interesting how that's infamously the last day of Hovenza leaving our territory. What do you have to say about Hess leaving? Well, you know, there's still some uncertainty as to what exactly is Hovensa doing. Yes, they are terminating all the employees as of April 20th. It's ironic that you mentioned that that's Hitler's birthday because I, I think Mr. Leon Hess has some German background as well. So it makes you wonder what is this really about. However, not knowing what Hess is going to do besides the 100-man uh, uh, storage facility, 
Um, as you know, there's severance going to be given to those employees and they have a package that's going to hold them over for a few months. Of course, there's already a lot of anxiety in the community. Some have taken up jobs elsewhere. There are individuals who I know who have already left and are leaving as the weeks go by. It's not all doom and gloom, however. Opportunities will open. It will take some focusing. Uh, the federal government is going to step in at some point and give some monies. What we do with those monies when we get it is going to be very important. Uh, we need to understand that we need to create new opportunities, new industries. There are some already on the horizon, by the way, as it relates to usage of that area, what, which was once Hovensa. So I'm not going to sit here and act like we're going to lay down and die because Hovensa is gone. Yes, we're going to have to pull our boots up. Yes, we're going to have to tighten our belts. But we definitely will see brighter days if only we focus. Senator Positive Nelson, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. In other news, Big Time Professional Boxing will be featured this month on St. Thomas. Let's take a look. This is a press conference to announce formally our April 25th Boxing in Paradise 5 event that's going to be taking place at the Mark C. Marin Center at Antilles School. On this match, Boxing in Paradise, for these matches, excuse me, Boxing in Paradise 5, it is going to be an unprecedented event in the Virgin Islands. For the first time ever, there will be three world title belts up for grabs. We don't have an exact order of matches for the night, but I'll start with Samuel. Samuel will be defending his belt against Mr. Durrell Richardson from Youngstown, Ohio. Mr. Richardson's record is 13 and four with five knockouts. Second, we have Julius that's going to be fighting Mr. Wilson Theophile from Nassau, Bahamas, who has an eight and three record with four knockouts. And then finally, the main event of the evening is going to be John Jackson versus Jesus Seelig from Douglas, Arizona, who is 14 and 0 with one draw and nine knockouts. And let me just go over the records for our guys. Um, Julius is currently 12 and 0 with eight knockouts. Samuel is currently 11 and 0 with six knockouts and John is 12 and 0 with 11 knockouts. This is history in the making. We want the people of the Virgin Islands to understand this. This is not just about 340 boxing, but this is about the Virgin Islands. And I know a lot of people, uh, 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 I guess, was waiting to see if this thing was really going to materialize. And you know what? It has materialized. And you know what? We're going to take it even further. And here it is. We have in three, uh, uh, and that, well, I wouldn't say three, but we have two, and we're going to have a third champion. Okay? And um, that in itself uh, man, is a tremendous uh, step on our path. And uh, we want the Virgin Islands to realize this. We're going all around the world. And we want the people of the Virgin Islands to understand that we are taking boxing to the next level. We've been training hard and, and it seems like after every fight, you know what I'm saying, we always go up to another notch. And I, 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 I really want to see my performance and see where I'm at for my last fight. So um, my opponent is a Sopa. Uh, check him out on, um, on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I, I know what to expect and um, I know what I'm going to um, put through toward the fight and we've been training hard in the gym. You know, my cousins and them, we've been sparring hard, we've been going all out. So, you know, it's a, it, you guys got to come out and, and, and see this event. I just wanted to say that uh, we, we are always ready and um, this fight, we even extra ready. And uh, we come in hard and uh, we're just going to represent to the best, to the fullest that we can. And um, I really don't, don't see any fights going <laughs> past 10 rounds. <laughs> But um, just come out and, and, and support. This show is going to have a lot of fireworks on it, man, because, you know, the way we've been sparring, the way we've been training, you know, um, we, I, I know we, I, we antsy. You know, we can't wait to fight, man. And um, so this fight going to be big, going to be real big. And um, especially for the Virgin Islands, you know, having fights up from St. Croix, you know, linking up with our boy, them, Clarence, you know, and, um, and plus us from here, it will be, it will be, uh, a night to remember. Tickets for the event will be on sale starting tomorrow. Our ticket outlets are, of course, Fat Turtle, the Alaska Bar that's across the street from the Four Winds Car Wash, Fashion Source in Tutu Park Mall, Max Mart in Niski Center, and for the ladies, Eccentric Shoe Boutique, because we have a lot of female fans of the Virgin Islands, so we carved out a venue that we know a lot of ladies go to in Eccentric Shoe Boutique. They're new, a new ticket vendor for us. Tickets for general admissions are $30. Ringside is $50. It's $10 more at the door for both tickets. 
We also have VIP tables on sale. Um, you can contact any member of the 340 boxing team for uh, information on VIP tables. Tonight, we take you deep inside the world of cosmetology. News Channel 8, West Mall was at Gertrude's restaurant on St. Croix as professionals gave it up to some complex students. Today, we have the cosmetology program right here at Gertrude's. We're going to go inside because I got to tell you, there's some beautiful men and women in there and a lot to learn. But first, you wanted, why don't you talk about them? Um, what this means to the community and what's going on um, in the business world with you and Shanti and them, are we well, still making out okay? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're doing our thing. Yeah. We know we've been in the business over 10 years, so we're working hard, yeah. doing what we need to do, and coming here and dealing with the kids, yeah. man, it's a great experience. First time I ever did it, but... You recommend uh, doing this again and other year. barbers to t partake yes. in this workshop as well? Definitely, and I would like to be here every single year. It's a good experience. Where's you your know? victim? I'm actually one of the students that volunteered. Okay. Um, he's showing off a design right now, and um, he's showing us, instructing us how how to go on about the proper way on performing different designs. Well, you're looking sharp. Your girl's going to be happy tonight when she sees you on TV. Well, she's going to be happy, all right. What's your name? Johan. Johan, and you're in this cosmetology class? Yes. All right, what's your um, your hopes and attributes? You want to be a barber? Or? Yeah, I want to be a barber. I'm, hope, I'm hoping to own my own barber shop one day. We're eavesdropping in here with Sarah, one of the instructors, and this is the, I guess, the weaving department here. Yeah, is that what we call it? Uh, braiding. Braiding and weaving. And, yeah, we'll be doing weaving later on. Okay. Sarah, give us a little background about yourself before we start dealing with the workshop and your students. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I've been doing hair for over uh, 10 years, yeah. and um, I used to own my own business here in St. Croix, yes, but I'm now in um, Houston, Texas, okay. uh, where I am still doing hair, yeah. and I also do, you know, instruction on braids and weaves. But you don't forget where you come from, right? You come back <laughs> and give it to our students here? Yes. All right. And what is this lovely lady uh, working on? What type of design uh, is this? Well, right now we're working on the kinky twist. The kinky twist? Yeah. it's kinky. That would be something for me then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we do it on natural hair and relaxed hair. Okay. Yeah. And who do we have with us today? Kimisha Barnes. You are beautiful. Look at those dimples. <laughs> It seems like all these ladies in cosmetology are beautiful, you know. I, I don't know if that's by design. Tell us a little bit about yourself then. Um, are you in school? Yes, I'm in, 11, in the 11th grade, uh -huh. attending St. Croix Educational Complex. Okay, you look forward to this then? Yes, it's very fun and you learn a lot of stuff. So yeah. far we learned to do the invisible braid, the kinky twist, the free braid braiding skills. We had a makeup class yesterday and it was really, really fun. Now in the nail section here at the cosmetology program at Gertrude's, I have Julia. And Julia, I talked to you some years ago. Hard to believe time goes by that fast. And you're doing all this um, beautiful nail work and you've got your students and everything. What does this mean for you to give it up to the community? It means a lot because at least I get something back from what I've learned. I mean, after um, working so many years, I've been working in nails for over 15 years. I've managed to uh, make techniques, different techniques of art and designs with nails so it could be easier for the student to work with. So your name is Kimberly. Yes, it is. And where are you from? I am, I would say I'm from St. Kitts. I tell everyone I'm from St. Kitts because that's where my mother is from. Yeah. You know, that's our roots. Our roots is Caribbean. Yeah. But um, I'm Canadian and I live in Miami. What does this mean, Kimberly, to give it up to the students like this? Well, you know, it's all about their future. And when it comes to these children, we want to make sure that they actually get to build something for themselves. So with makeup, for me teaching them, this is a great opportunity for people who are aspiring to be photographers, makeup artists, hairdressers. You know, once your face is fixed, your hair is fixed, you're fixed. Wow. <laughs> Let me stop. What's your name now? My name is Ran Goku. Yeah. And I attend the Educational Complex High School. I'm yeah. in 11th grade. 11th I'm 17 grade. years old. Okay. And basically... The reason why I'm in cosmetology is because I would like to open my own business. Yeah. Um, yeah. Got that going on. <laughs> so what would you like to do with your career besides cosmetology? 
Um, so maybe cosmetology is it. Is yeah, it right now, right? yeah. Well, that's going to wrap it up for me. I have to, I've been told I have to keep my eyes front. So with that, with that I just want to say I thank you for Gertrude's for sponsoring this again. Thank for all the instructors, Mr. Jones from the complex, for making this happen, these young ladies and these men here in, in the barber school, cosmetology department, you know, with the hair and the nails and everything. It's all necessary. And give yourselves a round of applause, will you please? Don't mess up those nails and everything. At Gertrude's then, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And when we get back, we'll have your Caribbean report. <laughs> Here's your Caribbean report. From Guyana, the West Indies cricket mascot, Guyanese Joseph Taylor, allegedly hammered and slashed his reputed wife, Eureka Garraway, in her head and is now wanted by local police for attempted murder. Taylor is a well-known cell phone vendor on Regent Street in Georgetown. Ever since his wife was brutalized on April 4th, she's been a patient at the St. Joseph's Mercy Hospital, recuperating from multiple wounds and a fractured skull. Police have assured that they would treat any information leading to Taylor's arrest with the strictest confidence and have asked that anyone with information, please contact them. From the Dominican Republic, Anheuser-Busch InBev said it has beaten off competition from Heineken to gain control of Cervecia Nacional Dominica in a cash deal worth over $1 billion, which brings the maker of Presidente Beer under Anheuser-Busch's InBev's Brazil-based AmBev unit. The combined business will include beer, malt, and soft drink operations in the Dominican Republic, Antigua, St. Vincent, and Dominica, as well as exports to 16 other countries in the Caribbean the U.S. and Europe. From Trinidad, the female relative who confessed to cuffing two-year-old Aaliyah Johnson to death, causing a rupture in her liver because the child drank some of her beer, has now been charged with manslaughter. The suspect is an 18-year-old pregnant mother of one, according to her. Little Aaliyah was laid to rest this past Saturday. From Puerto Rico, more sad news. The Spanish broadcasting system family is mourning the loss of Pedro Arroyo, director of programming of Z93 in Puerto Rico. Arroyo was the creator of the National Day of Salsa in Puerto Rico. SBS's president and CEO, Mr. Raul Alacarn, joined the thousands of voices that have expressed their condolences on the death of one of its most valuable resources. Pedro died in Puerto Rico on Saturday, April 14th at the age of 60. From Trinidad again, Again, who would have thought that a Trinidad and Tobago styled carnival in all its feathers, bikini, and beaded splendor would explode onto Hollywood Boulevard? Well, Caron Adams, the Trinidadian board LA resident, is making it happen on June 30th. The carnival will coincide with the International Soca Awards being held in Hollywood that same time and the BET Awards also that same week. And in cricket from Jamaica, a ruthless Jamaica completed an unprecedented fifth straight regional first class triumph when they crushed Barbados by 139 runs here on Monday. Jamaica senior cricket team head coach Junior Bennett says a combination of hard work and teamwork were the hallmarks of their record fifth straight win. And from Trinidad, West Indies failed to build on the hard work of their bowlers, led by Kamar Roach, who made a shaky start to their batting in the second Digicel test against Australia on Monday. The hosts trail 0-1 to in the three-match series following a three-wicket defeat in the first Digicel test, which ended last Wednesday at Kensington Oval in Barbados. The third and final Digicel test starts next Monday at Windsor Park in Dominica. <music> There was an anti-drug rally held on Synchro over the weekend. Let's take a look. It's our PM, a number five Essex Mountain Dew, under the big yellow and white tent. We are in your neighborhood to ask you to join us in the fight against alcohol and drug use among our youth. Try to bring an end to the misery that affects individuals, families, and our society. To smart aside, the alcohol. See no wrong from right, so stop the bleeding. Before I was a Christian, my life was a mess. I drank and smoked marijuana with my friends. But now it's all over, I can now sing again. There, Mr. Jesus, I just had to write to you. Something really scared me when I saw it on the news. A story about a little girl beaten black and blue. Jesus, thought I'd take. 
like this right now. So let's put a stop to this drunk driving. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. We have a series of training demonstration right here. What's going to happen, he's going to take the dog out. The dog is going to go through every single packages. Now, what's going to happen is that when the dog finds something, you're going to see what's going to happen. You're going to see what he's going to do. Now, yes, is in the second package, huh? This is Price. My name is Edward Charles. I'm Chief Instructor of the St. Croix Martial Arts Center. I've been teaching martial arts in Virgin Island for over 35 years. I have over thousands of students who pass through my school. The martial art teaches discipline, how not to be bullied, and how not to bully somebody. But today is about drug free. I need to say congratulations to Central and Hope SDA Church. For those who want to check our school out, we're located in Peters West next to Gateway Gas Station. The number is 227 7370. There'll be a job fair held at the UVI St. Croix campus tomorrow at 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. Bring your resume. When we return, Sports 411. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. first-hand information on the Youth Soccer League. Tim Williams, the uh, Regional Commissioner for uh, AYSO Soccer, Region 1383. Uh, with me, I've got uh, Garfield Duran, which is Assistant uh, Regional Commissioner, and also uh, Kim Hughes, one of our uh, coaches uh, and board member. Uh, we're here to uh, speak with you today about AYS, AYSO soccer. We're finishing up uh, another year, uh, 15 years strong. Had over 400 kids to come out this year to, to play soccer. We want to open, uh, uh, make sure we uh, get the message out to the public that we are opening uh, our registration effective next weekend for the 2012-2013 uh, season. And um, with that, uh, we want to make sure that the public knows that uh, uh, we do have scholarships available, both from AYSO and through a federal grant that we've, we, we've received from our friends with uh, CDBG uh, here in the Virgin Islands government. And we do want the public to know that uh, any child that they have that wishes to play soccer, that we don't turn any children away. We want them to come out and we will work with you to make sure we get them on the field. Now, now I'm going to turn over the mic to, uh, to our Assistant Regional Commissioner, uh, Garfield Duran, and we're going to discuss next week's activities. Uh, thanks a lot, Tim. Uh, again, I just want to say thank you all to the folks that have been assisting us as volunteers throughout the entire season. We are going to culminate our activities next week here at the Vialco or St. Croix Renaissance site with hopefully some really fun activities for the kids. Uh, we're asking parents and the general public to come out and support us. So we're going to start activities around 8.30. We're going to do a march of the teams. We're going to be referring to it as World Cup Day. So we're going to have a lot of the team members representing different countries, and we're going to do a parade around and recognize all the volunteers, the coaches, referees, and all the members of the community that have come out and supported us. Again, this entire program is 100% volunteer. So as you can tell, a lot of folks are ready to take a little break, but you know what? The kids are excited, and as you can see behind me, we've got a lot of kids that are going to go on to some really great things so we want to encourage the public to come out again running from about 8 30 until about noon come out enjoy meet some folks network a little bit and there's some activities going on st croix with regards to soccer or for some of you refer to it as football and you will be hearing a lot from both organizations as well as from the federation side again trying to work on having a cooperative venture but it's all about the kids so again please come on out and support us <laughs> 